chain rule, product rule. The next part is to look at the quotient rule. And uh, let's go in and have a little look and see what that can do. The quotient rule is given as trying to do dy by dx. It's going to be v du by dx here minus u dv by dx all divided by v squared where u and v here are functions of x. So let's see if we can have a look and see how we can actually do one of these and they are not that difficult but basically they are quite sort of involved so let's have a look at an example here and we'll see what we can actually do to try and sort of make this work so let's have something like x squared plus 6 over 2x minus 7. So this is a quotient so we're going to make u as x squared plus 6 and v is going to be 2x minus 7. Differentiating each of these this is going to be du by dx is going to be simply 2x and dv by dx is going to be 2. Now we've got that we can put these into this formula and when I do this I always write this out again for people to know what I'm doing so I would always write dv du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared and then I would substitute these in so we've got v which is 2x minus 7 and then I've got du by dx so that is going to be times by 2x and then I'm going to take away from that u which is going to be x squared plus 6 multiplied by dv by dx which is 2 I'm going to put a bracket around it and put a 2 there then I'm going to divide all that by v squared which is going to be 2x minus 7 all squared. Really that's the end of our differentiation but in fact it's only the beginning of our problems because what we now need to do is to try and sort this mess out. So let's simply work out what we've got here and see what we can do with this. Now let's just multiply. I've got two here and I've got a two there. I'm wondering if I just multiply here by x. So let's just do that. So that's going to become 2 times 2x squared minus 7x and that's going to be minus here well let's multiply it out 2x squared yeah it's probably going to be easier just to sort of plus 12 if I multiply all that out over 2x minus 7 squared I'm just trying to work out it's probably going to be easier to multiply it out and then collect the like terms 
I should have done that. 14x squared minus 4x squared minus 14x minus 2x squared plus 12 all over 2x minus 7 squared and that's going to give me collecting the like terms that's going to be 4 yeah, we could take the 2 out again yeah we will and so we've got 2x minus that's going to give me 2x take a 2 out it's going to give me x squared minus 7x minus Yeah, it is going to be minus, because that should have been a minus 12. That's going to be a minus, minus 6, all over 2x minus 7 squared. And I think that's probably how I would leave it. So, the differentiation is normally very easy. <coughs> what causes us the problems is something like sorting it all out. An example of trying to sort it all out is one of my favorite ones I give my students because they don't normally realize what I've given them. So let's suppose I ask you to differentiate simply y equals tan x. And people think, ah, yeah, that's going to be quite easy, isn't it? That's, And then they start looking it up in the book and they, they say, oh, there isn't a differential or an easy differential of that. Ah, yes, it is. We can work it out. It's simply going to be, if I do this, something like, oh, no sex squared x and then I'll say yeah okay so dy by dx is sex squared x prove it and that's where the problems usually start so let's have a look we know that tan x is really sin x divided by cos x. Now that is a quotient. So we've got u is going to be sin x and v is going to be cos x. We can differentiate these du by dx and the sine differential of sine is cos and we get dv by dx and diff differential of that is minus sine x. We'll do the quotient rule. So let's write this out. dy by dx is going to be equal to and then we quote the quotient rule which is v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. So let's see if we can write down what we've got. So we've got v which is cos x times du by dx which is also cos x then minus and then we've got u which is sine x and we've got dv by dx which is multiplied by minus sine x all over v squared which is here yeah, cos squared x let's do a bit of tidying So let's start with this. So we've got cos squared x 
and we've got minus sine x times minus that's going to be plus sine squared x all over cos squared x there's various ways we can go but we should remember our basic rule that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equivalent to 1 so this can be written as 1 over cos squared x and we know that cos squared x can be written as sec squared x and we've proved it so with these we've got not a bad way I suppose of trying to look at some of these simple differentials and they're not usually that difficult let's combine the two and we'll do another one and this time let's take something like the function y equals cos x over something like x squared you'll notice I'm trying to keep these nice and simple so let's go for writing down what we've got so I'm going to set u is going to be equal here to cos x and v equals x squared I'm going to now differentiate each of these so du by dx is going to be minus sine x and dv by dx here is simply going to be 2x I write down what I'm going to do dy by dx equals v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared let's substitute in here so we've got v which is x squared times du by dx which is going to be minus sine x and it's probably easier to put that in brackets and then I want minus u which is cos x times dv by dx which is times by 2x all over v squared and v squared is x squared so that's going to be x squared squared Having got this done, we've got to try and fix the problems. Now, basically, if I have a look at this line here, I think what we can actually do is to do something like take out a common factor and a common factor in here I can take out an x that might be easiest in fact I've got a minus in both so let's take out a minus x that might help me a lot so I'm now going to have just x left so it's x times that which is going to give me x sine x plus just the two cos x and this is all going to go over x to the 4 well I've got that I can cancel that out so if I just leave this as minus x sine x plus 2 cos x over x to the 3 
and that is probably how I would leave this one. So the quotient rule not too bad trying to do some of these bits and pieces they can get a little bit nasty trying to do some of them and if we look at sort of nasty exercises they can throw in some really horrible bits to try and make your life more difficult and typically the things that they're going to throw in there are going to be pretty nasty um, just thinking what sort of things they might put in they'll put probably e to the x in they'll probably put ln x in um, just to try and make your life a little bit harder so we've had a go at the quotient rule and by that we've also started having a look at the differentiation of some trig functions and I've gone there and proved to you that tan x is going to be sex squared x. Let's go and have a look at a few of these other ones. Many of them are actually going to be given to you, so you don't actually have to sort of remember them, but what you sometimes do have to do is prove them. So it's worthwhile going through some of those. So we've gone through a couple of these. Um, we've gone through simply the fact that if I've got differential of sine and cos so if y here equals the sine of x then we've said that the differential of that is cos of x if I make that a little bit more complicated then if I say we've got y is the sine of 2x then that's going to become 2 cos 2x when we differentiate it. We did that one last time. So we've got sine, we've got y equals cos of x and our differential of that is going to be minus sine x. We've done the tan today. We've looked at y equals the tan of x. And we've shown the differential of that is going to be sex squared x. Now, where do we go from here? Well, there are... Are quite a few more of these that we can have a look at to try and differentiate some of these but if we just take some simple ones I've got y equals then cosec and if I differentiate that that becomes quite a horrid one that becomes minus cosec x cot x that's much more fun to show y equals sec x and this becomes sec x tan x And our final one is if y equals cot x, then our differential of this is going to become minus cosec squared x. So differentiating some of these becomes quite nasty. let's do one of these so let's suppose I've got y equals cosec 2x over x squared well 
this is going to be our quotient rule again so I'm going to have my u is going to equal cosec 2x and my v is going to equal x squared du by dx here so we've got to do a differential of my cosec and we know that the differential of cosec is minus cosec so this is going to become minus 2 cosec 2x and dv by dx is going to become 2x. When I work these out then we're going to write out my quotient rule dy by dx equals putting in all the bits and pieces v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. Many students feel that it's not worth writing that out every time. They say, yes, it's obvious, isn't it? And I can just write all these things down and not cause any problems. And it's great until you make a tiny little mistake. And so I do them slowly and carefully. So V is going to be X squared du by dx I've written down as minus 2 cosec 2x and I realised I've already made a mistake because that was going to be 2x cot x and so that would be cot 2x won't it see I made a mistake minus and then I've got my cosec 2x, my u. Times my dv by dx, which is 2x. All divided by v squared, which is x squared, all squared. Let's see if we can now multiply this out and let's see what we can actually do with this now I'm looking at what we're going to get and we're going to try to sort of multiply this out and let's just see what we get so minus 2x squared cosec 2x and then we've got remember those are simply times by that so I think I've got that times x squared cot 2x I think minus two x cosec two x I think I haven't made a mistake there over x four. Right, see if what we can take out here. Well I can take out a minus 2x cosec 2x out. So let's give me, yeah, let's take a minus 2x cosec 2x out. That's going to leave me with. A 
have got an extra one in there, haven't I? Yeah, I did. X. Cot 2X. Plus 1. And that's now going to be over X cubed. And it's going to give me an answer. So it takes a little bit of effort trying to sort of get through some of these questions and I find in the books they often cut out an awful lot of the steps and I try and put all the steps in there to make life a little bit easier trying to work out what's going on. Now there's another rule I want to show you and that rule is all about how I could write dy by dx and dy by dx I could write that another way and I could write it as 1 over dx over dy so when I've got these sort of ideas we can try to work out some interesting functions and these are the arc functions and you can find that you're usually given these so y equals perhaps something like arc sine of x if you're not familiar with that, that's another way of saying y equals sine to the minus 1 of x. But when we try and do this, we try and make life easier for ourselves by simply differentiating this as that. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Excuse me there. Right. If I differentiate this, dy by dx is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's look at y equals arc cos x. Oh dear. Ah! Wretched hay fever. dy by dx equals here minus 1 over the square root here of 1 minus x squared. And similarly arc tan dy by dx here is going to equal 1 over 1 plus x squared <coughs> now we've got some of these things we can work out all sorts of nasties So, let's have a look at one of these. Let's look at y equals the arc sine of something like x squared. And we're asked to find dy by dx. Well, if we think about these then we're going to simply use here the chain rule dy by dx equals dy by du times du by dx so let's decide that 
here u is going to equal basically my um, x squared and so the other bit so we've got y equals arc sine of u okay using that chain rule we need to first of all differentiate these so we're going to do du by dx and that's going to be 2x and dy by du is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So what we can now do is write all that down and see what we've got. So we've got dy by du which is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared multiplied by 2x. If we now multiply that out, that's going to be 2x over root 1 minus u squared but we knew that u squared was x squared so this becomes 2x over the root of 1 minus x squared all squared which gives me 2x over the root of 1 minus x to the 4 and there's our answer So we can get a lot more complicated functions here simply by meeting the sort of arc signs to try and work out various horrible sort of bits and pieces. And we get a whole load of these different sorts of equations that we have to try and sort of meet and deal with and they're, they're not particularly nice and helpful they really are sort of pretty nasty sort of bits and pieces that we have to try and deal with so where are we going to go from here well we've got to look at some more problems and let's just sort of take something and go and have a look at sort of things that they might give us to sort of have a go at and then see basically where it's going to take us because these aren't particularly nice many of these differentials really are quite sort of really horrid so let's let's go and have a look at a question and go and see what we can actually come up with and see if we can work something out so let's go and try something fairly nasty let's go and think of well how about let's mix some things up so let's go and look at something like y equals e to the x times the arc cos of x. And that doesn't look particularly nice to try and go and have a look at. So we'll, we'll settle in with that one and go and have a look and see what we can come up with. Right, now, let's have a think about what 
what's involved with this one well it looks to me very much like a product rule so let's have a go at the product rule so where would I start well simply I'm going to put in what the product rule is so let's say my dy by dx is going to be simply u dv by dx plus v du by dx okay so let's set these things up so I'm going to set u is going to be my e to the x and my v is going to be my arc cos x let's differentiate each of these du by dx of e to the x is e to the x and dv by dx is going to be this arc cos and we said that arc cos was minus 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared so let's put these together so dy by dx is u which is going to be e to the x times dv by dx which is going to be minus 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared plus v du by dx so that's going to be the arc cos of x times dv by du by dx which is e to the x I've got e to the x as common here and I'd probably write these round the other way so that's going to give me e to the x into the arc cos of x minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared and really that wasn't that hard it looked worse than it was <laughs> so where does that leave us well our next job is to have a look at parametric differentiation and parametric differentiation is all about having a look at parametric functions so what I'll do next time is I will have a look at parametric functions and then what we'll do is we will try and differentiate those. And you'll find that basically parametric functions aren't that difficult and that parametric differentiation then is just something basically using either the chain rule, the product rule or the quotient rule and we can put all those things together so there we are that's what's coming up next time and i'll see you then on a level maths topic by topic if you like this subscribe and stay safe bye bye